on Vega Goose Review, we take a look at an older title. Now, I first played this a few years ago, and honestly, after replaying it, it holds up just as well. What do you think? What will you think? Well, let's find out. Today we're talking about Valkyria Chronicles, a game that many have called XCOM Lite, and we're going to see why. Let's get started with the gameplay. This game combines turn-based combat with a third-person action shooter, similar in many ways to the XCOM franchise, however it's only slightly less hardcore. In this game, death is rarely permanent as down units can be saved by other people collecting them from the battlefield. Each turn you're given a certain amount of CP or command points. You can use these to move your units. This is done in real time, allowing you to personally direct each turn of the, each battle. Now this in particular, in my opinion, makes it somewhat superior to XCOM, where once you put in a movement, you can't stop it for any reason, whereas here, if your character turns a corner and you see there are people, you can turn them right back around and get back into cover. This makes making strategy a great deal simpler. As commander, it's your job to assemble your team. Each playthrough is unique because of this, as you can decide to make up your team as each squad is selected from a group of rocket troopers, snipers, shock troopers, engineers, and scouts. Overall, the gameplay for Valkyria Chronicles earns a perfect 10 out of 10. This is probably the most fun strategy game I've played in a good while, and for a console game, it is fantastic. Next up, we'll take a look at the graphics. This game uses a cell shaded look, and it does cell shading perfectly. The game looks exactly like an interactive anime, but this is exactly what they're going for. Damage Stone do graphics similar to old Looney Tunes cartoons. This gives the game's heavy storyline a lighter side, which helps it not be too depressing. The character designs are each unique, and you don't feel like any of them are based on cliches, but simply very effective game development. Overall, I give the graphics of this game a 10 out of 10. They did a stellar, stellar job here. Next up, we'll take a look at the sound. Despite the game's cartoony look, the sound grounds this game in a very real sense of dread. The voice editing is fantastic, with each character giving a real performance and honestly not feeling like they're sitting in a booth. More than that, the music and sound effects are pitch perfect to the moment, putting you into each and every individual scene. More than that, going back to the voice acting, not one voice really felt out of place. There are a couple voices that are just there to make you laugh, and when you hear them, you will actually laugh. John DiMaggio, in particular, basically doing a parody of his Randy character from Futurama makes me laugh every time. Overall, I give the soundtrack to this game a 10 out of 10. It is fantastic. Next up, we'll take a look at the story. The game takes place in an alternate version of Europe during a war between two empires, with one small country caught in the middle. Now, this country has Ragusite, which is basically fuel in this world. And the two bigger countries want it, and so one of them has finally come to get it, and they're coming for you. You play as Welkin, some of a very famous tank commander, who is pressed into service when his hometown is attacked by the Empire. From there on, you and your squad must do what it takes to take back your homeland from Imperial forces. The story isn't bad, however, it has one very large problem, cliched writing. Near the end, nearly every cliché in the world is shot in at some point, and it's going to affect the score. Overall, the story of this game earns a 6 out of 10. It's above average but the massive amounts of cliché, particularly towards the end, really do hurt the process. It's a fun game, but the story, honestly, is good until the very last chapter. Finally, let's take a look at customer care. There were no bugs or glitches at release, nor were there any bugs or glitches in my recent replay. The developers did a fantastic job, and as such, they should be rewarded with a perfect 10 out of 10 for their customer care. Overall, Valkyria Chronicles are the 46 out of 50. It is a fantastic game. If you haven't experienced it, I'd highly advise you play it. There is a sequel that came out for the PSP, but honestly, I've never played it, so I have no idea if it holds up to this standard. However, I do hope we get a proper sequel to this franchise in the future. That's it for this game. For more games or anything else gamer related, please head over to holdtheline.com. Until next time, my name is Vega Goose, saying that's my opinion. What's yours? I'll see you next time.